Hi everybody, thanks for tuning in to this scintillating experience of putting a linen wrap onto a pool cue. We're going to put a black with white spec linen wrap onto this old McDermott cue. It had a brown and white wrap before, so I think it'll look a little bit nicer. I started to do a live video on Instagram the other day where I removed the wrap, but it was very difficult, so I did most of it off of camera. And we'll try to finish it off now. It's, it's going to be really tough to do, and it's not a fun job. But not all cure repairs can be fun. Yeah, the thing that everybody has to, if you're gonna try to get into repairs, the biggest thing, you just gotta do it. Just gotta get in, get your hands dirty, start scraping things, and that's the way it is. Anybody can do this stuff. It doesn't take a great deal of skill, and knowledge will come. But if we can see, this stuff is really, really on there. And it's hard and tedious to remove it. All we can do is keep trying. Is there anything else harder than scraping off old string that's been glued down and worn down and aged? I can't think of anything. But if you can, just ask. Comment. Tell me what you think. And this is going to be a nightmare. So maybe we can speed this up at post. Fast forward, time lapse this stuff. And I should have been more prepared for this video by getting this done. But this is part of the tedium of doing cues. It all has to get done. And it takes time. And that's why I let it go. Because I didn't want to do this. So it sat in the, sh in the corner with all the other projects to be completed. And when guys ask where their stuff is, it's in the corner because I don't feel like doing it. It's not fun. But the results will be worth it. And when people get their stuff back and it looks new and it feels nice and they're happy, it makes up for my displeasure at being stuck in my shop, scraping old glue and linen off a 30-year-old cue that probably won't get played with. But it'll look pretty. The whole idea behind getting this old linen off is to give this cue a nice smooth place for the new wrap to stick. Linen is great at hiding bumps, so you won't feel any of this through the new linen wrap when it goes on, but it won't stick well. So we just want to get it nice and smooth and ready for the new layer of glue that I'm going to put down. I could probably do this under power, but because there's a whole bunch of stuff right in the wrap channel, I don't want to risk stripping all of this clear coat off. As soon as I catch one little area, it'll just chip off, and then I'll have to refinish this cube, which I don't want to do. Any more work than necessary, I want to avoid. This is a flat rate job. I gave the guy a price on replacing this wrap which in Canada is about 60 bucks. Um, I think the rest of the world charges a little bit more. I think in the States, a wrap job is around $100, which is about 300 Canadian at the current exchange rate. Getting close. Not a fun job to watch, really boring. So I'm gonna experiment and put some power to this thing. And this cue's really got a bad warp in it. I don't know if we can see it, it's bouncing. You can hear the intermittent touching. That's warped. Most cues are warped. Being straight really isn't a factor. Unless you want to roll the thing on the table for some reason. Which doesn't mean anything except it's round. I get a kick out of watching guys roll cues. They go to the bar, find the straightest one. 
and then missed their first shot. So much old stuff in here. All this stuff I'm scraping off is really brown. That's the dye from the old linen wrap. Soaking through from the moisture from the guy's hands when he played with it. Linen is really good at soaking up sweat, which is why guys like it. And you see the dye just ran right into the wood. Kind of gross if you think about it. Any questions or comments, just drop them down in there. And when I get a chance, I will respond. Although I'm way more reachable on my pages on Facebook at QJoe's Customs and Instagram at QJoe's underscore customs. It's just an easier way to converse. But I will try to be more diligent in responding to YouTube emails in the future. It's been a minute since I've put a video on YouTube, but I'm going to try to be better. Everybody should try to be better in their whole life. It's not just about posting YouTube content either. So this is all tedious hand stuff. I just want to get this nice and sharp. So when I start the new wrap, it has somewhere to butt up against. And that's pretty good. Nice and smooth, so my first part of the job is done. Pro tip, we're going to put some Sharpie oh, on both these shoulders. So if I don't get the wrap completely tight, it'll hide, you're going to camouflage it just with a little black line. I also like to write my name on here and the date. So if that comes back to me, I know I wrapped it before in the past. This is where I get fun. So I've got my trusty sharpened paint stick, my glue, my silicone tube, and my new linen. I've already pre-cut a length of linen off of here. That's gonna come into play later on. <clears throat> so this is ready. I need to get my speed. Turn my lathe in reverse, so I'm going to wrap the linen on here, get my speed set on its maximum, which is hopefully going to be about that fast, but this cue has a warp in it, so it might be difficult for me to wrap this under power. <clears throat> get some glue, apply it. This is water-based glue, so it will clean off the linen afterwards. I've got a foot pedal that I'm using to control the lathe right now. The more glue the better because we can clean off the excess later. So the most important step here is starting off and finishing. So to start this, I'm going to tuck this linen in right against the shoulder, nice and tight, cross it over, and then by hand, give it a little spin. I'm holding tension on this piece of silicone tubing for a couple of reasons. Number one, this stuff is sharp, so when it's spinning, it will cut right through your fingers 
like a razor blade. Number two, it's hot. So we're gonna take that piece off and try to have a look. Make sure it's, this is where the paint stick comes in handy. Push it, make sure it's tight. I'm going to try to put some power on this and hopefully if all goes well, I can get some linen laid down. And I can't because my motor has a little delay from when I step on the pedal to when it starts turning. It makes it tough sometimes. So I'm pulling, well, Here's where the paint stick comes in handy. Just re push these up, the part that's loose. So when I'm wrapping, I'm actually trying to keep tension towards the back of the cue so the linen wraps on tightly. A lot of these little gaps we can leave and fix them after when I press it. But it always is nicer if you can keep it pretty tight the whole way. sharp eye on what your linen's doing because it wants to cross over and make life difficult. I often think that cues are sentient. They try to make my life tough. Seldom do they want to make life easier. me think of that song. Today was a good day, but I'd be lying because I don't like this. It's not going super easily. In the shop today, I've got my friend Andreas Eichmuller from Here After Media He's helping me with some videoing. A great resource if you can get him to come help you. Definitely hook him up, look him up on all different social media platforms. And I've, I don't know if you can tell, I've got this linen unwrapped like 14 inches from the queue. It's not fun to work so far away. But when you cross it over and have to unwrap it, you gotta do what you gotta do. That's gonna go even further now. I cut a new silicone tube too short. I like to wrap a couple fingers around it to keep tension without cutting myself. That's proving to be a little difficult, which is okay. It just makes me work smarter. I constantly have to make adjustments too. I think I'm going to do this the easy way and just spin the lathe by hand because why would we want to use the power 
why we spend so much money buying these lathes that have power. We can just spin it by hand. Seems counterintuitive, right? But you never have a mistake if it's going this slow. I spoke too soon because I just had a mistake. So now we're coming to the end of that wrap channel. And this is where this piece of linen that I cut off earlier really becomes important. So I'm going to put some wax on this. Any wax is fine. Candle wax, car wax. This is Renaissance wax. It's all gonna do the same thing. The wax is gonna provide some lubrication. So we're gonna put this piece under the wrap that we're wrapping. <coughs> wrap over it. And then paying very close attention where the linen meets the shoulder of this cue. Tightly to finish the wrap channel off. It's right there. So that's done. I'm going to cut this if I had my blade out. And I'm going to pull this tail that we have left here down here to where that piece ends. Take a little bit more wax, put it on here to make it slippery. I'm going to put this through this loop I left. Sometimes it's tricky. You get one hand. Hold it tight. Pull the other two things out here. Now it's tight. Now that's locked in. It's not going anywhere. I'm going to put my thumb the back side of the tails and pull it through. So now this is discarded. Don't need that again. So now our, our linen is through and it's out of the way. So I can get rid of my little contraption that's holding my linen in place. Spread these gaps out. Get this back tight against the shoulder. got our linen piece here. I'm going to cut it without cutting the linen we just wrapped on. Because that would really suck if we had to redo this all for one lazy moment of cutting the linen poorly. Now I'm going to just have a look, spin this, and see if there's any gaps. And this looks you know, pretty good for the amount of restarts I had. That is wonderful. I can almost just leave it like that and go home, but I won't. The next step is going to be to flatten the linen using this wonderful tool that is task specific for linen wraps. Costs a whole bunch of money. Nobody has one except guys like me. So you can't really do this at home by yourself. I'm going to spin the lathe the correct way again towards me. Turn the speed up a little bit. Still using my foot control to spin it. When the linen comes off the roll, it's round, so I want to make it flat, because right now we can feel every, you, you, can, you can hear that, my fingernail rolls across it, there's bumps in here, it doesn't feel nice. So we're going to press it, make it flat. I'm going to do that right now. smoother. That's single pressed. Usually I like to double or triple press it. I think I'll triple press this because I've had really good results with triple pressed linen wraps in the last little bit. It looks really good. It's nice and flat now. We're just going to flatten it out even more.
twice. That's three times. So that's a tr triple pressed linen wrap. We're getting near the end of this job. Only a couple more steps. This is my favorite. I don't iron my clothes, but I iron linen when it's on a queue. Everybody can appreciate that. So I'm gonna plug my iron in. And this is a, an iron that is made for applying decals onto model airplanes, if you can believe it. They should be making these for guys like me to do queue wraps, but they don't. So we have to borrow technology from other industries. So while that's warming up, I'm just gonna get some paper towel and some spray starch. Because I wanna make this feel good. Oh, you know what, it needs a little sanding first. Yeah, I've already forgotten forgetting steps. So I'm going to take some 600 grit sandpaper, just a tiny little piece, and I'm going to sand the, the loose fluff off this linen. I'm going to turn the speed down a bit because this thing bounces so much. I'm just going to lightly sand it. Just take the top, the top fluff off of there. That feels really good. Feels fantastic. I'm getting phone calls, I'm on call, but they can wait. Easy off, easy on. Same thing, really. Spray starch, gonna starch this thing out, make it feel nice. So you can see this cloth is turning black. That's just from the sanding I did on that linen. Loosen the fibers up. Now we're sort of closing them off. going to iron this. So with dark colored wraps, I like to keep my iron fully hot, as hot as you can get. With light colored wraps, you got to really watch the heat because you'll burn the, the linen and have to redo it again. And I don't know about you, but I do not like doing the same job two or three times. I've never actually made that mistake myself. But I've heard of guys that have done it. Make plenty of other mistakes. Just never burned a linen wrap. So a lot of guys, if they don't have a, a fancy linen iron, we use a couple pieces of oak and you can actually press the wrap with oak and burnish it in. So I'm gonna turn the speed up a little bit and try to really burnish this by hand with this cloth. And it might be loud and bouncy, but that's the cross we bear. If you look close, you'll probably see some steam coming off of there. So I'm putting a lot of pressure on here with my hands. And I'm gonna do this right until my thumbs can't take it anymore. And I'll let them cool off and do it again. satisfactory job. I think you guys would be really happy with this. And I'm just using this, this cloth that has the uh, spray starch on it to clean off that loose loose glue that it seeped out. And when that dries, it'll just wipe right off. That's it. We're done. 
anybody has any questions, ask them. I'll answer. I'll try my best anyways. If it's something I know the answer to. Like the video, subscribe, share on all the platforms. I really need your help. Q Business is terrible right now in this world we're living in. Just kidding. But still like, subscribe, share, ask questions, comment. We need all the attention we can get. Thanks for watching.